we have four readings. Uh, the first reading is from John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 10. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as witness to testify the light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and, all, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. Our next reading is from Matthew, chapter 18, verses 1 to 9. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who to believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world! Because of the things that cause people to sin, such things must come, but woe to the man through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet be thrown into eternal fire. And if your hand causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. And we have a third reading, Mark 9, verse Yes. Causing to sin. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. And we have the fourth of the Bible reading, Luke 8, 18. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever ha has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken from him. Amen. Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters, the subject of my meditation today is not mentioned enough from the pulpit. I think I cannot recall anybody talking about it in church, and I think even if it is unusual to mention it, it really deserves not only to be quoted, but it is worth to look at it deeply. I recently woke up extremely early. There was an image 
fixed in my mind that was supported by the reading of a disturbing article read on The Guardian, I think. The image fixed in my mind and memory was nothing new, but the article that went with it hurt me, or I should better say broke the serenity of that peaceful night and still does it now when I think about it. I am sure you have all seen a similar picture on the newspaper or online. A procession of little girls around 10 years old with wedding dresses, accompanied by men of any age, even elderly men. A procession of little girls with makeup and an appearance out of the ordinary. Little girls around my daughter's age who walked in that picture towards the altar to get married. The revolting idea is the fact that those men were about to use their infant body for their own pleasure. From the first night of the marriage, abusing not only their body but also breaking their childhood. A child that is 10 years, 10 years old, and by the way, today is my daughter's birthday still need to play, to live as a child, to dream, to be cuddled. He, she walks close to you. He, she lets you take his her hand, kisses you, where she gets out from school. A child 10 years old changes little by little his her voice. A child of 10 years old is quiet and smiling and in one moment becomes sad and melancholic without knowing why. A child that is 10 years old observes you. He, she understands when you are sad. A child of that age asks difficult questions of history, politics, economy, sociology and theology. It makes you feel small sometimes because you don't know the answer. 10 years old the first oppositions between the need to walk with you and to walk a bit detached, not to be seen by schoolmates. A 10 years old desires to tell you about his day while you stroke his, her head. 10 years old are a ring that unites the childhood and to the teenager's age. 10 years are a bridge. A child that is 10 years old is starting his a research of life and is not ready for a relationship of sex. He, she is not ready to defend himself or herself. A 10 years old is not strong enough to refuse a culture that is imposed to him or her. A child that is only 10 cannot fight a violence, a abuse that is accepted even by your parents who need money so they sell you to men more than 30 years old than you. The image of a little girl that I saw in that newspaper, I discovered to be called Moira. It shows a tiny face with sad eyes in focus, in front of this long parade. Her look is full of innocence, tenderness. And as I said, it is present lively in my mind. The picture has given me anger but the article even more because I feel to have no power. Reading, I discovered Mora died because of the violence suffered the first night of her wedding. This image looks like hell to me. And if you think about a child of that age, you know, in that situation, you can feel even more how violent and unbearable it is. We all judge countries like Thailand, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, where, ch where child marriage is legal, where this sexual torture is admitted. But I am aware of European agencies that while you choose your best travel package before going to Thailand under the desk, you can choose also the child you prefer for your exciting holiday. And this happens at least in Italy. Somebody the 23rd of September, in a form or line says, I am a pedophile. This is my sex orientation. There is nothing 
I can do about it. I think the statement that pedophilia is a sex orientation is debatable. We cannot call sex orientation the desire to abuse, to rape somebody who is innocent and would suffer for such a violent, act, violent action and be shocked for the rest of her, his long life that waits ahead. I would rather call it sexual, sexual deviation, sex deviation, a very sad discovery for many people who unfortunately have this attraction. It must be hard for pedophiles as well to be aware of their perversion. But what says the Bible about it? There is no direct mention of pedophilia in the Bible, but there are numerous biblical principles that definitely apply one such principle in, is the Bible view of the sin of the fornication. The word translated fornication has the same idea in both the Hebrew and the Greek. The Greek word is porneia, from which we get the English word porno and pornography. The word in scripture refers to any illicit sexual activity, and this would have to include the abhorrent acts of pedophilia including the gathering and trading of obscene, obscene or indecent pictures of young children. People who use this type of pornography usually graduate from looking to actually doing, bringing great harm to children. Fornication is among the lusts of the flesh, Galatians says, and among the evil things that come from the heart of a man apart from God, Mark. Pedophiles share the characteristic of being without natural affection, as Romans says, verse 131, and 2 Timothy as well. The phrase without natural affection is translated from the Greek word, which means inhuman, unloving, and unsociable. One without natural affection acts in ways that are against the social norm. This would certainly describe a pedophile. In addiction, there is a principle found in Jesus' words about children. Jesus used a child to teach his disciples that childlike faith is necessary for entrance into the kingdom of heaven. At the same time, he said that the Father has concern for all of his little ones. Matthew 18. In that passage, Jesus says, But those who shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were engaged, were hanged, sorry, about his neck, and that it were drawn in the depth of the sea. As we have read before, the word offend in the Greek means to cause one to stumble, to put a stumbling block or impediment in the way upon which another, another may trip and fall, to entice to sin, or to cause a person to begin to distrust and desert one whom he ought to trust and obey. These definitions of the word offend can easily be applied to the actions of pedophilia. Of course, the principle of not harming a child can be applied to a wider range of child abusive actions. And Matthew 18, 10 makes the case against anyone who would bring any type of harm to a child. So pedophilia is certainly not approved by the Bible. Pedophilia is one of the worst evils of our society and is spreading. There are many websites that celebrate the pedophilia and show the violence on the minors. Pedophilia, ped pedophilia is also one of the worst scandals of the Catholic Church, but nobody talks about it. Reports and complaints of pedophilia arrive and are arriving in the Vatican from all over the world. It is about thousands of complaints. Right now there are trials against many priests. This scandal has been always hidden by the Catholic Church. It is only now, after many years of silence, due to corrupt Catholic bishops that has finally coming out. I am surprised, I have to say, that the BBC never talks about it. But what can we do as Christians? The best we can do is not to judge 
if somebody aware of his pedophilia feelings comes to us and tells about his attraction with sufferance, we have to be ready to support who needs to share his pain and to underline that God loves us in our worst. We must say that God wants us to come to this person to be saved out of all troubles that we cannot overcome on our own. We need to remind of God's forgiveness and that God knows our life, our hurts and dreams. God loves us and knows our story. In the end of the day, all of us are discouraged sometimes. Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Also, Jesus says, said, whoever comes to me, I will never reject. Jesus leaves an open door, especially when people are far away from him, especially and where we would never expect. God, dear brothers and sisters, wants us to believe for, for something beyond this broken world. He wants us to trust that He, the Creator, can see us through. Also, that Jesus, our Savior, can make a way. This means that we can entrust all our being, not only our sexuality, to God, and expect Him to do what we cannot in any situation of hardship. We need to remember, finally, that Jesus said, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. God, dear all, makes each life a unique story of redemption. Amen.